the Earth. It's home to some incredibly remote and isolated places that few have ventured to. In today's video, we're embarking on a journey to discover the 15 most remote locations on our planet. From desolate islands in the middle of vast oceans to towns nestled deep within hospitable deserts, these places showcase the profound diversity and wonder that our world has to offer. Let's begin with number 15, Tristan de Cunha. Kicking things off is a small archipelago known as Tristan de Cunha. This remote locale is situated in the South Atlantic Ocean, and it's part of the British Overseas Territory of St. Helena. It comprises several islands, with Tristan de Cunha being the largest. The archipelago is located approximately 1,500 miles from the nearest continental land, which is South Africa. The islands are of volcanic origin, with their highest peak, Queen Mary's Peak, rising to over 6,700 feet above sea level. It was discovered in 1506 by the Portuguese explorer Tristão da Cunha, after whom the main island was named. However, it wasn't until 1816 that the British formally annexed Tristão da Cunha, and today the island has a population of around 250 people, making it one of the most isolated inhabited islands globally. Access to it is primarily by sea, with a six-day boat journey from South Africa being the most common way to reach the island. The unpredictable South Atlantic seas make access by sea challenging, though, and infrequent. There's also an airstrip on the island, but flights are exceptionally rare due to the challenging weather conditions. But fear not, because despite the geographical isolation, the community has access to modern amenities such as satellite TV and internet, so they can binge watch just like the rest of us. Number 14, Dalol. No, this isn't another planet. This isn't a film set. This is a region located in the Danakil Depression in Ethiopia known as Dalol. It isn't just one of the most remote places on our strange planet, but it's also widely known for being one of the hottest and most inhospitable places on Earth, with scorching temperatures, geothermal activity, and a surreal landscape of colorful hot springs, salt formation, and acidic pools. The area's extreme isolation and hostile environment make it a challenging destination to access and explore. How the hell does someone even come across such a tough-to-find, tough-to-traverse terrain? The Danakil Depression, including Dalol, was discovered by Europeans in the 1920s during various expeditions to the region. It's situated in the northern part of the Afar Triangle, close to the border with Eritrea and not far from the Red Sea. Access to Dalol is difficult, primarily due to the lack of infrastructure and the harsh desert terrain, which is further compounded by the region's extreme temperatures and volatile, unforgiving geological activity. With all that said, visiting Dalal is possible, but it requires careful planning and the assistance of experienced local guides familiar with the area. Go at it alone, and you will lose the battle against Mother Nature. Travelers should be well prepared for the challenging conditions, which include the blistering heat, lack of vegetation, and limited facilities. On a good day, Dalal has an average temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit, but it can easily surpass 122 degrees. Yeah, no problemo. Number 13, Omiakan. Omiakan is a rural locality located in the Omiakan Sky District of the Sakha Republic in Russia. It's widely known as one of the coldest inhabited places on the planet, with a population of about 500 people braving these harsh temperatures day in and day out. Life in Omiakan is tough. The region's characterized by a cold so extreme that most humans just couldn't do it. The village experiences an incredibly harsh and unforgiving climate, with temperatures regularly dropping below negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit and sometimes even dropping past negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, the human body is at serious risk of frostbite or even freezing within minutes of exposure. Metals shatter, liquids freeze instantly, and common items freeze to exposed skin. Getting to Omyakan can be challenging, particularly during the winter months when roads are often covered in thick layers of snow and ice. The village can be reached by a combination of roads and remote tracks, with the nearest major city being Yakutsk, the capital of the Sakha Republic. Now, despite these severe weather conditions and the isolated location, Omyakan does receive some visitors, including adventurers and, of course, Instagrammers fascinated by its extreme climate and the unique experience of visiting one of the coldest inhabited places. But what's truly amazing is the fact that the 500 people who call Omiakan home have managed to adapt to these challenging conditions, relying on traditional practices to make it through those brutal winters. Number 12, Socotra. Socotra is a remote archipelago in the Arabian Sea, about 240 miles north of the Arabian Peninsula. It's part of Yemen, and it's known around the world for its amazing biodiversity and unique flora and fauna, making it a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
It's also been called the Galapagos of the Indian Ocean. The main island of Socotra, along with the smaller islands surrounding it, remains relatively isolated and remote, contributing to the preservation of its distinct natural environment. Getting to Socotra ain't easy. It's downright rough getting here by modern means. Thinking about booking a flight here? Well, think again. Direct flights to Socotra don't quite exist, so flying means flying to Yemen and traveling by sea. On the other hand, the isolation has helped protect the island's pristine ecosystem, making it a haven for nature enthusiasts and researchers. It's home to a small population of approximately 60,000 people, primarily of Yemeni descent. The inhabitants rely on fishing, agriculture, and livestock rearing for their livelihoods, but that only adds to the charm. The history of Socotra dates back to ancient times, with evidence of human habitation dating as far back as the 1st century AD. The island has been influenced by various civilizations, including the Persians, Greeks, Romans, and Arabs, and its strategic location in the Arabian Sea has made it a significant trading post throughout history, with people leaving small bits of their various cultures behind to create something amazing. Number 11. Alert Canada O Canada, where pines and maples grow, great prairies spread, and lordly rivers flow. But not in Alert. Alert is a small sediment located in the Kikiktaluk region of Nunavut in Canada. It's situated on the northeastern tip of Ellesmere Island, one of the northernmost inhabited places in the world. The settlement is known not just for its extreme isolation, but for its unforgiving Arctic climate, the temperatures often dropping to bone-chilling lows and perpetual darkness during the long winter months. The remote location puts Alert at a significant distance from the rest of the world, approximately 508 miles from the North Pole. Access to Alert is primarily restricted to military and scientific personnel, as it serves as a Canadian forces station and weather station. Getting here, though, even for the military, is as limited as it is challenging, usually requiring specialized transportation and logistical support, because a place like this isn't just going to have the level of infrastructure we're used to. Alert was established in the early 1950s during the Cold War, no pun intended, when it served as a weather station and a strategic military outpost. The war may have ended, but the researchers and scientists remains. The station still plays a vital role in monitoring and studying the Arctic environment, including its contribution to climate research. Here, they observe and report changing weather patterns and environmental conditions in the Arctic, contributing to global efforts to understand and address the impact of climate change on polar regions. Being an alert also means being on alert, because cold commandos and shivering scientists aren't the only inhabitants. These people are used to some four-legged, furry, and ferocious neighbors. Yet polar bears, oh my. Number 10. Flaming Mountains You can bet that a place named the Flaming Mountains is a remote region. These flaming mountains of the Turpan Basin of Jingzhang, China, are fiery red sandstone hills that stretch across the vast desert landscape. This place is renowned for its extreme heat and desolate terrain. The Flaming Mountains are considered one of the hottest and most remote places in China. The scorching rays and arid climate make it a less than desirable place, so needless to say, getting here is pretty tough, and you can forget about staying here for too long. Some fun facts, though, about the Flaming Mountains, including their numerous mentions in various legends and folklore like Journey to the West, as well as their designation as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The sandstone formations change color throughout the day, creating a mesmerizing display of shadows and hues that add to the allure of this place. On top of that, the region is known for its rich cultural heritage, as evidenced by the ancient cave dwellings and archaeological sites scattered across the area. The fact that ancient people lived in these flaming mountains is amazing in its own right. The only question is, did they conquer the region or did the region conquer them? Accessing these flaming mountains typically involves traveling by road, making your way along rough highways. So while folks can get here, it's still about timing, because getting here in the summer means dealing with the temperatures rising well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit and a complete lack of shade. Plus, the sandstone reflects the sun, and therefore the heat, which only makes matters much, much worse. Number 9. Tuvalu Tuvalu is a small Polynesian island nation located in the Pacific Ocean, approximately halfway between Hawaii and Australia. Comprising nine coral atolls, Tuvalu is one of the most remote and geographically isolated countries in the world. Its total land area is just about 10 square miles, with a population of around 11,000 making it one of the smallest and least populated countries globally. It may be small, but the country is drop-dead gorgeous. 
Tuvalu is known for its picturesque coral reefs, its turquoise lagoons, and palm-fringed beaches. The local culture is deeply rooted in traditional Polynesian customs, including vibrant dance, music, and handicrafts, which reflects their rich heritage of this island nation. With all that said, however, Tuvalu remains one of the least visited countries in the world, with relatively few tourists making the journey to this remote paradise. A lack of direct flights and limited infrastructure contribute to its status as a hidden gem, allowing for the preservation of the pristine environment, as well as the Polynesian culture. The history of Tuvalu is characterized by its colonial past, having been under British administration until it gained independence in 1978. Now, despite its independence, Tuvalu continues to face various challenges, including threats posed by climate change and rising sea levels, which have the potential to submerge the low-lying islands in the near future. The nation has been actively involved in global initiatives aimed at addressing climate change and advocating for the protection of small island states vulnerable to its impacts. It's amazing how a place so small and so far away can still feel the negative impacts of things happening so far away. Number 8. Svalbard Sitting in the Arctic Ocean, Svalbard is located about midway between mainland Norway and the North Pole. It's part of the Kingdom of Norway and comprises several islands, the largest of which is Spitsbergen. The archipelago is known for a lot of things, mainly its massive glaciers, snow-capped mountains, and polar fjords. This archipelago is home to diverse animals – bears, arctic foxes, numerous bird species, and even reindeer. Yep, reindeer are in fact very real. Despite its extreme northern location, which only seems fit for old Saint Nick, Svalbard is home to a small population of around 2,700 residents. These kind folk reside in the main settlements of Longyearbyen, Berensburg, and Nialesund. Life on the archipelago isn't easy. It's usually characterized by its harsh Arctic climate, with long, dark winters and relatively cool summers. It's highly unlikely that anyone here owns a swimsuit. The Svalbardians keep the lights on thanks to creating a haven for scientific research, mining, and even tourism, making use of the region's natural resources and one-of-a-kind geography. An overlooked aspect of Svalbard is that it's a demilitarized zone. The archipelago is in fact governed by the Svalbard Treaty, which grants equal rights to all signatory countries for conducting commercial activities here. Additionally, Svalbard is known for its unique polar phenomena, such as the mesmerizing northern lights, which can illuminate the night skies during the winter months, creating a spectacle worthy of any bucket list that attracts visitors from around the world. Unless you're part of the Polar Bear Club, though, getting to Svalbard is tough. First, you have to go to Oslo or Tromsø, then fly to Jungirbjörn, the largest settlement in Svalbard. And during the summer months, though, there are also occasional cruise ships and ferries that travel to Svalbard from mainland Norway, if you're looking to live out your Leif Erikson fantasy. Moving on to number 7, La Rinconada. La Rinconada is a small town located high in the Peruvian Andes, at an altitude of over 16,700 feet above sea level. Sounds way too high to live there, right? Well, tell that to the people who call this natural skyscraper home, because it's often regarded as one of the highest permanent human settlements in the world. Nestled within the rugged terrain of the Andes, La Rinconada is known for its extreme living conditions, challenging environment, and unique way of life shaped by its high altitude setting and the pursuit of gold mining. The most notable aspect of life in La Rinconada is the sheer difficulty of everyday things. Life here is characterized by the hardships and struggles faced by its inhabitants, who endure the harsh climate and precarious living conditions in pursuit of economic opportunities in the local mines. The town's population primarily consists of miners and their families, who engage in artisanal and small-scale gold mining as the main source of livelihood. The unforgiving environment, though, combined with a lack of basic amenities, creates a perfect storm for health risks and safety hazards for the residents. All of this poses the question of how did these people get here in the first place? Well, the town's origins can be traced back to the early 1980s with the discovery of gold. Miners, claim jumpers, prospectors, and what have you all flooded the Andes region seeking their fortune. For them, the prospect of untold riches was far greater than altitude sickness. Settlements began popping up here and there, but over time, the informal mining activities in La Rinconada expanded, leading to the establishment of a makeshift town and the development of a rudimentary infrastructure to support the growing population. Today, about 50 to 60,000 people call the mountains home, and this town is accessible by a winding and rugged mountain road, which can be impassable during heavy snowfall and inclement weather, further isolating the community from the outside world. In those bad months, no one is coming in or out. Number 6. The Siwa Oasis 
The next place on our list is about as tough to find as an oasis. The Siwa Oasis is a desert oasis located in the heart of the Egyptian Western Desert, near to the border with Libya. Situated approximately 30 miles to the east of the Libyan border, Siwa is renowned for its rich history and unique cultural heritage, much of which has been preserved to this day. The oasis is home to a small population of around 33,000 people, primarily consisting of the indigenous Berber ethnic group who have inhabited the area for centuries. Because of this, they're able to keep their traditions alive. Siwa Oasis is about 350 miles from the Egyptian capital, and getting here by plane is not an option. Coming here means taking a five-hour train ride from Cairo, followed by a four-hour bus ride. Now, despite the remote setting, though, the Oasis has become a sought-after destination for travelers seeking an authentic desert experience and a glimpse into the traditional Berber culture and an older way of life. For those lucky enough to see Siwa, expect to explore the ancient ruins of the Temple of the Oracle, believed to have been visited by Alexander the Great. The oasis is also known for its locally grown dates and olives, which thrive in the desert climate, offering a taste of the region's unique agricultural produce. Travelers can indulge in a rejuvenating swim in Cleopatra's Bath, a natural mineral spring known for its therapeutic properties. For those looking for a place to spend the night, there's the famous Desert Eco Lodge, built using traditional mud and salt construction techniques, which offers a unique and immersive lodging experience, allowing guests to connect with the natural environment and the rich cultural heritage of the literal oasis. Number 5. Changtang Changtang is a vast high-altitude plateau located in the northern Tibetan Plateau, extending out across the Tibetan Autonomous Region in China and Ladakh in India. It's situated at an average elevation of over 14,800 feet above sea level, making it another one of the highest and most remote plateaus in the world. Reaching such great heights can often mean hypoxia, acute mountain sickness, increased respiratory and heart rates, and headaches, that is if you're not from here. Changtang is home to a small population of nomadic herders, primarily belonging to the Tibetan ethnic group, who practice a traditional way of life centered around pastoralism and livestock rearing. The nomads speak Tibetan and maintain a strong connection to their cultural heritage, reflected in their customs, language, and spiritual beliefs. Despite these challenging living conditions, though, and the isolated nature of the plateau, the inhabitants of Chungtung have preserved their unique way of life, sustaining a harmonious relationship with the surrounding environment. The remoteness of this place is accentuated by its distance from the nearest major city, with Lhasa, the capital of the Tibet Autonomous Region, situated above 750 miles to the southeast. When you're that far away from the nearest town or city, you can rest assured that you're going to rub shoulders not just with plenty of livestock, but with wild animals as well. Changtung is home to a unique diverse ecosystem that supports a variety of wildlife. I'm talking wild yaks, Tibetan antelopes, and several species of migratory birds coexisting alongside these nomadic communities and adding to the region's unobtainable allure. Much of this is also part of the Changtang Cold Desert Wildlife Sanctuary, which is home to a number of endangered flora and fauna. There's also the Pashmina Goat, which is famous for its ultra-fine cashmere wool. Pashmina in Persian means made from wool, and in Kashmiri, it translates to soft gold. Number 4. Villa Las Estrellas Villa Las Estrellas, located in the Chilean Antarctic Territory, is a very small civilian settlement and research station situated on King George Island, part of the South Shetland Islands archipelago. As one of the only civilian towns in Antarctica, Villa Las Estrellas serves as a home to the families and support staff of the nearby research base, serving as a vital hub for logistical operations and providing essential amenities and services for the local population and visiting researchers. A younger entry to the world of remote outposts, this cold Chilean outpost was established in 1984. The settlement's equipped with basic infrastructure, including residential buildings, a school, a post office, small hospital, and a bank, which caters to the basic everyday needs of the residents and the transient scientific community conducting research in the region. But just because you can live somewhere doesn't mean that you should, and Las Estrellas has garnered the reputation of being one of the most extreme and inhospitable environments on Earth. During the long, dark winters, which last from May to December, residents can expect to live in a world that exists well below zero. Add the whipping winds to those bone-chilling temperatures and the absence of sunlight, and you're looking at one of the toughest places to live. And yet, people are here. The settlement's infrastructure and facilities are designed to withstand the harsh Antarctic climate. 
and the population of this place fluctuates depending on the season, with approximately 80 to 150 people residing in the settlement during summer months when research activities are at their peak. The residents, including support staff and their families, come from various backgrounds and nationalities, meaning it's a multicultural and diverse community that thrives in this isolated outpost. Access to it is primarily facilitated through air and sea transport, with regular flights and occasional maritime services connecting the settlement to mainland Chile and other research stations in the region. The extreme weather conditions and challenging terrain pose significant challenges, necessitating careful planning and coordination for the safe and efficient movement of personnel and essential supplies to and from the settlement. Number 3. Bantam Bantam, one of the 27 coral islands that comprise the Cocos or Keeling Islands, is a remote coral atoll in the eastern Indian Ocean, approximately midway between Australia and Sri Lanka. With a total land area of just two square miles, Bantam is part of the Cocos Island Territory, which is under the Australian governance. The atoll is known for white sand beaches, crystal clear turquoise waters, and a stellar coral reef, but it's also known for being so far away from the rest of the world. Bantam is pretty secluded. It's situated about 1,800 miles off the northwest coast of Australia, and accessing these islands typically involves a flight from Perth, Western Australia, or from the Australian territory of Christmas Island, followed by a boat transfer to the islands themselves. As always, the remoteness of the region adds to the allure, preserving its natural beauty and pristine marine ecosystems for those fortunate enough to venture to this secluded tropical heaven. That is, if you can stand the trip. A tiny atoll means a tiny population. The population of Bantam and the entire Cocos Islands is relatively small with just over 500 residents, composed of a diverse mix of ethnicities, including the Cocos Malay community, as well as individuals of European and other Asian descents. The inhabitants of this place and the surrounding islands are known for their warm hospitality and their close-knit community, which reflects the unique cultural fusion here. The history of Bantam and the Cocos Islands at large is intertwined with its discovery by early explorers, including the Englishman Captain William Keeling, who arrived in the region in the early 17th century. The islands later became a British territory before being transferred to Australian governance. Bantam, along with the other islands, has played a significant role in the region's maritime history, serving as a key waypoint for trade and navigation between Europe and the East Indies. The days of old shipping may be over, and the age of tourism began long ago, but it is still pretty cool that this place is gorgeous and it remains relatively untouched by the masses. Number 2. Iqaluit, Nunavut Situated along the southeastern coast of Baffin Island, Iqaluit is surrounded by the vast and pristine landscapes of the Arctic, characterized by this rugged terrain, icy fjords, and breathtaking tundra. With a total land area of about 20 square miles, Iqaluit serves as the economic, administrative, and cultural center for the resilient communities scattered across the expansive Nunavut territory. Iqaluit is approximately 1,200 miles to the northeast of Ottawa. The history of Iqaluit dates back to ancient Inuit settlements and the region's significance as vital trading and cultural hub for indigenous communities. The area was officially recognized as the capital of Nunavut in 1999, following the division of the Northwest Territories to establish a new area. Since then, Iqaluit has played a pivotal role in fostering the development of Nunavut's unique cultural heritage, promoting the preservation of traditional Inuit practices and languages, and facilitating the growth of a modern and resilient Arctic society. Iqaluit is home to a diverse population, including the indigenous Inuit people who have inhabited the region for centuries, as well as individuals from various cultural backgrounds and professions, reflecting a multicultural fabric of contemporary Arctic society. The population is about 8,000 people, and it contributes to the vibrant and close-knit community that thrives amidst these challenges. Fun facts about the Iqaluit include its role as the home of the Nunavut Legislative Assembly, where the elected representatives convene to address the region's political and governance issues. The city is also known for its Tunic Time Festival, celebrating Inuit traditions and culture through various cultural activities, traditional games, and community gatherings. Iqaluit's rich heritage, breathtaking natural beauty, and the perseverance of its resident, it stands as a testament to the enduring spirit of those who call this remote Arctic region their home. So while this land seems so far from the rest of the world and exists in such a tough place, there's still plenty of life and plenty of beauty to be found here. Number 1. Point Nemo Point Nemo's nickname leaves no room for interpretation, the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility. 
This odd location in the South Pacific Ocean holds the title of being the most geographically isolated point from any landmass. So how does one even come across such a place? Who was the first? Well, the discovery of Point Nemo is not attributed to a specific individual, but rather to advancements in satellite technology and geographic mapping that allowed for precise measurements of the Earth's surface. This void gained attention after Croatian survey engineer Rovija Lukatela identified it in 1992, recalculating its coordinates in 2022 using OpenStreetMap and Google Maps data. The name Point Nemo was inspired by Jules Verne's Captain Nemo from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, a childhood favorite of Lucatella's. The location also features in H.P. Lovecraft's The Call of Cthulhu as the fictional city of Rile, predating the identification of Point Nemo by about 66 years. But what is the point of Point Nemo? Because no one lives here. What's its relationship to humanity? Well, great question. It's got the unique distinction of being the designated area for the controlled descent of decommissioned satellites, space stations, and other spacecraft. It's essentially a spacecraft cemetery. Now, seeing as how the closest landmass is 1,600 miles away, there's zero risk of collision with populated areas or marine traffic during fiery re-entry of space debris. As the International Space Station is scheduled to be intentionally deorbited into Point Nemo in 2031, the location's role as a designated re-entry site for space equipment underscores its significance in the safe and environmentally conscious disposal of space debris. You know, in fact, the people on the ISS are closer to Point Nemo than any other human down here on Earth. Yeah, that sounds insane, but it's true, because the ISS is somewhere about 260 miles up. And while Lucatella may have found the place, they never visited. No one has ever been to Point Nemo, and chances are no one ever will. I'll see you guys next time. Watch our binge watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge. Thank you to our channel members.